A wild card is a special character that represents zero or more characters. Excel supports three wild cards, the asterisk, the question mark, and the tilde. Let's talk about the asterisk first. It's the most commonly used wild card. The asterisk can represent any number or string of characters. But how is this functionality useful? Well, today we'll combine wildcards with some Excel functions to answer questions in the following scenario. Here's a database of animals at a wildlife zoo. Each species of animal is listed by its ID number, its classification, the total number we have on property, its country of origin, and its location on property. We know how many animals we have in total, there's 175, but there's an elementary school interested in organizing a field trip, and we'd like to give them a more detailed summary of the types of animals they'll see if they visit our zoo. Let's find out how many animals originated from each continent and use the asterisk wildcard to quickly answer that. We've listed the seven continents, and now we just need to use the COUNTIF function to count how many different species we have from each continent. We start by typing equals count if, open parentheses, and our range will be the one that contains the names of the continents, column E. We click on the first value, and we can control, shift, and down arrow to quickly select all the values in that column to the end of the data set. We can also press the F4 key to make our cell range absolute. That prevents the range from shifting when we copy our formula later. We type a comma, and the next argument in the COUNTIF function is the criteria. We want to count how many species we have from Africa, regardless of the country. So we type double quotes to tell Excel what to look for, and we'll use an asterisk as a placeholder to represent any number of characters. We close the double quotes, and then we use an ampersand to let Excel know that we're looking for any number of characters in combination with the value in cell H5. We end with a close parenthesis and hit enter. We just found out that we have three species from the continent of Africa. What about the total number of animals from each continent? We can use the SUMIF function to add cells based on a given criteria. So we'll want to add the cells in the inventory column based on their continent. Let's jump right in. Equals sum if open parenthesis, we'll be evaluating the cells in column E to see if they meet our criteria. So we select E5 all the way to E37. F4 to make our range absolute, we type a comma. Then our criteria will be cells that say, we type double quotes, then an asterisk to mean anything close our double quotes, then we need this in combination, that's the ampersand, with the value that's in cell H5. We type a comma, and now we need the values that we're going to add. That'll be the numbers in cells D5 to D37. We hit F4, and then we type our close parentheses and enter. So now we know that we have nine animals from Africa on our property. And now we can copy these formulas to get the results for the other continents. Let's select them both and drag on the fill handle. And now we have everything filled in. Let's check if we captured all the values. Let's do a sum of all the animals that we got from our formula. And we got 175, which is the total number in our inventory. Our asterisk wildcard works great. What about the question mark? This wildcard represents one unknown character. When a question mark is used in an Excel function or functionality, Excel will assume that the question mark could mean any single letter of the alphabet and will look for all the other letters requested by our search. Let's apply that to our Zoo Animals database. Column E has most country codes listed as two-letter codes, but a few are listed as three-letter codes. Let's standardize that by isolating the ones which were listed as three-letter codes. We can create an auto filter, so let's click on the Data tab 
and the filter icon. And we want that filter applied to column E. The format here is country code, comma, continent name. So in our filter search box, we'll just type three question marks to represent any three letters, then a comma, and then an asterisk to represent any string of letters that comes after the comma. We click OK, and we can see all the rows that were affected. We can just go in and adjust them. Here's a copy of the zookeeper's duty roster for this week. The only problem is that Marianne's name is spelled with a couple of variations. She says that there should be no spaces or dashes between Mary and Anne, and there should be no E at the end. Let's quickly fix it before the schedule is printed. We press Ctrl H to get our Find and Replace window. Find what? We type Mary, question mark, that'll take care of either a dash or a space, and asterisk. Notice that we didn't type a question mark at the end. If we did, we'd be telling Excel that there must be a single character after the word an for it to do a replacement of this cell. In that case, it wouldn't fix the value in E12. So let's type what we'd like to see in this cell. Mary, no space, Anne, no E at the end. And we click Replace All. Excel made five replacements. Let's check all the occurrences of Mary Ann's name. All six of them are now spelled the way she wants. We can use wildcards to extract specific information from Excel datasets by using lookup functions. Each species at the zoo is identified by an ID number. ID numbers are five or six characters long, consisting of two letters, followed by a dash, then two or three digits. The zoo uses a system whereby the first two letters are really a prefix for the animal's classification and their continent of origin. But the number after the dash is unique. We want to be able to query the common name of an animal and its location on the property by using that unique number. So let's say we wanted to query what is species number 899. Well, we start with equals and V lookup, open parenthesis. We know that the unique part of these ID numbers start with the fourth character. So the first three characters will be represented by three question marks within double quotes. So three question marks within double quotes. We use the ampersand to let Excel know that we're looking for three characters in combination with the value that's going to be in cell I4. Let's make that an absolute reference also, because we're going to copy this formula in the cell below. We type a comma to get to our second argument, the table array. That'll be this entire data set. And F4, comma, to get to our third argument, the column index number. In this case, the enclosure location is located in the last column of our data set. That's column number six and comma. We want an exact match, so we type the word false and close parenthesis. We hit enter, and we've learned that this species is located in enclosure C6. What's the name of the species? Well, we can just copy this formula here and change the column index number to the second column, the name of the species, and enter. So now we know that species number 899 refers to a plain zebra, and it's located at enclosure C6. What would happen if an asterisk or question mark were actually part of our search values and not a wildcard? When we want Excel to search for a literal question mark or a literal asterisk, we simply place a tilde before that asterisk or question mark. Here on our duty roster, zookeepers who are scheduled for an on-call shift have an asterisk immediately following their names. So what if we wanted to remove the on-call indicator in anticipation of a busy week ahead and schedule everyone for full shifts? We just press Control H to get our Find and Replace window. In the Find What box, we type tilde, asterisk, and in the Replace With, we type nothing. We click Replace All, and our asterisks are all gone. 
It's important to note that the wildcard functionality in Excel functions only work with text, not numbers. So if you want your functions to do partial matches on values that look like numbers, for example dates, then you'll have to do a couple more steps to convert that data into text so that wildcards can be applied. Finally, not all Excel functions can execute wildcards. Here's a list of the functions that do accept them. The average if and average ifs functions. Count if and count ifs. Sum if and sum ifs. V, H and X lookup. And the match function and the search function. I'm sure you've seen from this tutorial how practical and helpful wildcards can be, and we've got lots more Excel resources in the GoSkills Excel library. Ready to learn more about Microsoft Excel? Then check out the full course on GoSkills.com. Click the link in the description.